What's going on guys? My name is Tim Ruswick and today I thought we'd talk about the minimum viable game. Uh, this is also known as rapid digital prototyping or the spiral model or a whole bunch of different names. I like minimum viable game because that's the whole MVP concept from Lean Startup and I have a lot of experience in startups so I definitely have used that uh, model before and that way of thinking. And basically if you don't know it's the idea that you should not make the entire game at first you should start with the minimum viable game the minimum viable product the the smallest piece of it that you can uh while still getting across what your game is now a lot of people get this wrong because they try and make a minimal version of their game like oh they 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 cut out you know a bunch of stuff uh but the keyword is minimal but also viable so minimum viable game doesn't just mean the, the smallest piece you can do. It doesn't just mean uh, cubes and rectangles and, and you know, programmer art and just random stuff that you can do in, in an hour. It actually means a minimum viable product. So you want to start with something that you can actually show to somebody and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking for my game. This is what it is. And this is really important because a lot of people, let's say they want to make an RPG, right? They start designing their whole world. They got the story building. They got 100 spells. They got like all this equipment and stuff that you can pick up. They're trying to write the, the magic thing, the battle systems, all this different stuff. And the problem is like you can get – you can make progress on that. You may even have the perseverance to carry through for uh, weeks, months, sometimes years. But at some point you're going to burn out and a lot of the stuff you're going to be working on isn't really relevant to the game. A better way to approach that is with this whole minimum viable game uh, or this rapid digital prototyping or this iteration cycle or spiral model, whatever you want to call it, is to build a basic version, right? So try it with one spell and with one, you know, town or with one little building, one little battle or whatever it is. Build that so you can show someone and say, here, look what I got. This is my game. Try and build like in game design, they call it a vertical slice, whereas it's something that looks complete. It looks polished, but it's only one little piece. Um, if you can build that with minimal like attacks or weapons or whatever it is, then you can iterate. Then you can change something and then you have got something new and you can change something and add something. You've got something new and keep going through the, the whole cycle. The problem is most people try to start. They try to build everything at one time. And they get lost in here, a lot of dark work, and then they quit because they never get to the point where they can finish. You want to start small because then you can add on to your circle and it gets bigger. You can add on the circle and it gets bigger. You add on the circle and it gets bigger and so on and so forth. So minimum viable game I think is a really important concept and I think a lot of developers should learn how to apply it to their projects because when you think in terms of like iteration cycles, right? Um, you're not saying that, okay, like I got to cut this feature or I can only have 50 weapons instead of a hundred weapons. You're starting small and you're really reading the game. You're really reading the feedback that you're getting. You're really reading the things that, um, are coming in the inputs, and then you can make iterations based on those inputs. So for example, let's say even if you could make an entire RPG by yourself and you just start developing it all. You might develop a whole bunch of stuff that nobody likes, that nobody wants to play. That's just not fun. But for example, if you start small and then you iterate, you can show the different versions to different people, get feedback. They may have ideas. They may give you feedback. They may say, no, this battle system sucks. Uh, they may say, it's just not fun to go in this one area. And your iteration cycles can kind of feed on that feedback and you can end up growing towards a more player centric game a more fun and engaging game because you took to heart the minimum viable game. Now, this is a little bit different with rapid digital prototyping. And the idea behind rapid digital prototyping is similar, right? The minimum viable game is still part of that, but you want to iterate as fast as possible. You want to get through that loop as fast as possible. And in, in startups, we call this an iteration loop. And basically what it is, is the faster, the reason why some startups succeed is because they're really small and nimble, where some of the bigger guys are really slow to react. If IBM or some of these big companies wanted to come up with a new piece of software, it would likely take them years, right? Microsoft or any of these guys. 
years. Whereas if it's you and your buddy and a few programmer friends, you guys could probably whip out a quick version, um, depending on what it is, obviously, but like let's say in a week, right? And then you can polish it a little and ship the next week and polish it a little and ship the next week. And the idea is the faster that you can go through those cycles, uh, the better your game will be because you know where you're going each cycle. Each cycle you learn something, right? This worked, this didn't work, people like this, people didn't. Um, so you want to be showing people in every cycle and getting feedback and all this. And I'm doing this with the Philophobia testers now. And we're getting feedback every little level. Um, I'm getting a lot of feedback on which of the maps work, which of the enemies work, uh, where people are dying and all that stuff. In each loop, I'm iterating a little tiny bit. I'm changing a little tiny bit. Most people don't notice what I change, but they may notice the level gets easier or um, they die less or whatever it is. And as I'm watching all these play tests, I'm iterating and I'm changing. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's what the minimum viable game is. That's what rapid digital prototyping is um prototyping is obviously the, the the basic form of it but you can carry that same principle and concept all the way through to the end uh goal and <coughs> excuse me i don't know what's wrong with me today um it's it's really effective so i wanted to share that with you guys i wanted to kind of um let you know about it i know i've mentioned it a few times i've talked about it but i wanted to make a video about it because if you're new to game development or you're just getting into games don't start with that big project um and even like i have videos that say cut it in half or different tips and stuff for game developers but starting with that small minimum viable game the minimum thing that you can play like if you make a racing game make one car and one track and get the thing working if you're making an rpg make one dude one town you know one weapon whatever it is get that working and then iterate on there onwards from there because it's so much more effective You'll make a better game that way. You'll stay motivated more that way because you're seeing something change constantly. Um, you're not doing all the boring work up front or anything like that. So it's just really effective. And I've seen a lot of startups succeed with the same methodology. I've seen a lot of games work. And I definitely could not uh, do it without that. Like the Finish Friday stuff, man, like that's one cycle that we see on Friday, right? Like we take a game, we iterate on it and we push it out, but we're going to be doing the fix it Friday stuff where we kind of go back and we do another iteration cycle on each one of the games, make them better. We add stuff. And so you guys are going to get to see that live, which is going to be cool. But I want to share that with you. I hope, hope it was useful. Um, if you have a comment on this, please leave it below. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Once again, I'm Tim Ruswick and I will see you guys tomorrow.